Hey guys, welcome to the channel again. If you're not so familiar with the command line and you still want to try Arch Linux, this is the tutorial for you. Today we are going to install Arch Linux with a script, so let's get going. So here we are booted up on the Arch ISO and the first thing we need to do is to check of course for our internet connection, otherwise we cannot download the script. So we'll type in IP space A and hit enter. And I have already an IP on my second interface there because I have an Ethernet cable connected to my machine. But if you have Wi-Fi, now you can type in Wi-Fi dash menu and hit enter. Then you will see a list of networks. You can select yours, enter the password and you'll have an IP as well. Then let me delete this command here and clean up the terminal. And now we can download the script. And to do this, we'll type in wget archfi.sf net slash archfi and hit enter. It's going to take a moment to download the script. There you go. And now we can start the script by typing in sh archfi and hit enter. And here is our script. So let's begin. First thing is we need to select the language. So I'll hit enter here to select the first option. And I'll go for English. So I'll select English and hit enter. Now I'll select my keyboard layout, so I'll select the second option here and hit enter. And I'll look for mine, which is this one right here, and hit enter. And then press enter to continue. Now I want to select also an editor, which I'll need later. So I'll go back to editor here because it's an optional step and hit enter. And I'll select nano for this tutorial, so I'll just hit enter here. And enter to continue. And now we go to this partitioning, so let's select the option there and hit enter. And we have several of these partitioning schemes here. So this is depending really on what kind of machine you have. So basically, if you have a UFI system like the one I have right now, the best option would be auto partitions, GPT and EFI. If you have an MBR bio system, you might go with the auto partition in DOS. If you have a bio system with huge drives, more than two terabytes drives, you might go also with auto partitions, GPT BIOS plus UFI, or also GPT only. So in my case, I'll select the first option and hit enter. And this is the only drive I have, so I just hit enter here. And this is a warning that all my data will be erased. That's fine, so I'll select yes and hit enter. It's creating a EFI partition, a swap partition, and a root partition, and that's done. So I hit enter here. And now we have to go back to the previous menu, so we'll select back and hit enter. And we can select now, select partitions and install and hit enter. Now it asks me here to select the boot device. I don't know which one it is. So I need to find out which is my boot device, which is the swap device, and which is the root device, because here it's not written. So we'll have to cancel out from here and hit enter, and go back to disk partitions and hit enter here. Now let's scroll down to edit partitions, for example, with CF disk and hit enter. Select the only disk we have, and that's fine. So I hit enter here. And this is CF disk, and here I see a little bit more info about the uh, partitions. So I see here VDA1 is a EFI system, so this is going to be our boot partition. I see VDA3, it's a Linux swap file system type, so this is our swap partition. And VDA4 is our root partition. So we have to keep this in mind when we format the partitions. So I'll select quit here on the bottom and hit enter. And I'll go back to the previous menu here. And now I can select partitions and install and hit enter. And now for the boot device here, we'll go to VDA1, as we saw before, and hit enter. For swap device, we go to VDA3 here. And for root device, we'll select VDA4, and hit enter. Now, it asks us to select the home device, but we don't have any, and we didn't create also any home partition. So I'll select none here, and hit enter. And this is the summary. So if you want to have a separate home partition, you'll have to go back to CF disk and create one yourself. In my case, this is fine, so I'll just hit yes here. And now we are asked to format the devices, so I'll click OK. And again, it's a warning, all data on selected devices will be erased. That's fine, so I'll select yes and hit enter. And now we need to select the format for the boot partition. So this is a EFI system, and of course the boot partition has to be formatted with a FAT32 file system type. So the first option is fine, and I hit enter here. And that's done, so I hit enter to continue. Now select partition for the swap. It's already selected as swap, so I'll just hit enter here. And that's done. And for the root partition, you can select different file system types here. In this tutorial, I'll go for ext4 and I'll hit OK. 
and that's done. Now we can mount these partitions, so we'll select the mount option and hit enter. And we see here it mounted our root partition VDA4 under the mount directory, which is our installation directory. Then the script created two directories inside the mount directory, the boot and the home directory, and mounted finally VDA1, our boot partition, into the boot directory, and also activated our swap on VDA3, so that's fine. Now we can select also the mirrors by country or edit the mirror list. I'll select the first option here and hit enter. And I'll select my country right now, it's Switzerland. So I go down to Switzerland and hit enter. And now I know the mirror list is going to look for mirrors in Switzerland when I install packages. So that's perfect. Now we can proceed by installing Arch Linux. So I'll hit enter here on the option. And here you can select the kernel you want to install. So the first option here is going to install the latest Linux kernel. We have also the LTS version for the long-term support version. We have also a Zen version of the Linux kernel, which is meant to work on most systems. And we have also a Linux hardened version, which is more focused on security. But for this tutorial, I'll select the Linux version, so I'll hit OK here. And I'll choose also to install the Linux firmware, which contains some extra packages for the kernel. So I'll just hit Enter here too. And now we can select some file system tools. For me, DOSFS tools is fine. I don't need the others, but if you see some of them that you would like to install, go ahead and do that. So I'll hit OK here. And now it's proceeding to install the base packages. So I'll be back when it's done. There you go, the packages are installed, so we just hit enter here. And now we can move to the next step, which is configuring Arch Linux, so we hit enter here. And the first thing is we set the computer name, so we hit enter here. You can select the name for your machine, I'll call mine ArchFI and hit enter. And hit enter to continue. Now we can set the keyboard layout, so I'll hit enter here. Mine should be already selected and it's there, so I'll just hit enter here. If not, you can select yours and hit enter again. Then we can set the locales, so I'll hit enter here on set locale. And I'm looking for the English US locale, so I'll scroll down here until I find English US. And there you go, and hit enter. And the locales are done, so I'll press enter to continue. We can set down the time for the machine, so I'll hit enter here. And I'll go down to Europe, because this is where I am now. And the closest city to me is Zurich, so I'll select this. You'll change this accordingly to your location. And this is done, so I'll hit enter to continue. And we can synchronize now the clocks, and I'll go for local in this case, and hit enter. And that's done. Now we can set the root password, so we'll hit enter here, and enter the new password, and retype it. And there you go. Now we need to generate the file system table, so we'll select this option here and hit enter. And we have several options on how to generate the file system table. I'm going to choose the first one here, which is the default normally, which is going to generate the fstab file on the UUID partitions. So I'll hit enter here. And that's done. So I hit enter to continue. Now there are some optional steps here that we could go through, but I don't need. These are optional. And I don't have anything else specific to configure here. So I'll just go to the bootloader and hit enter. Now we can select the bootloader we want to install. Mind you here, if you have a EFI system, you might want to install grub, systemd boot, or refined. If you have a BIOS system, you might install probably grub because systemd boot and refined are not compatible with MBR systems. But I'll select grub for the tutorial here and hit enter. And the first thing is we need to install the packages for grub. So we'll just hit enter here on the first option. And that's done. Now we need to install also EFI boot manager as it's a EFI system. So I'll click yes here. And that's done too. Now it's generating the grab configuration file, and this is also done. And we can install now grab on our EFI partition by selecting the last option and hitting enter. This is the disk, and that's fine, so I'll hit OK here. And because you have a EFI system, I select the first option here, EFI, and hit enter. And this is done. Now we can go back here by selecting back. And we have some extra packages here, so I'll hit here the packages. And we have the option here to install Nano, Vim, and the DHCPCD service. I don't need to install Vim because I want to have Nano. And I let the other two selected and hit enter. And those are done as well. Now the base script is finished and we can move on to the full desktop install. This is another script, so I'll select this one and hit enter. And we need to download two dependencies for this script, so I'll just hit yes here. And those are done. 
Now we have the option to install and run the script or just launch it or just install it. Of course, we want to install it and run it. So I'll select the first option here and hit enter. And the source server, I'm going to choose GitHub as I had some problems recently with SourceForge. So I'll select GitHub and hit enter. And it's going to download the packages. And there you go. Now, the main menu here consists of three parts, updates, install, and config. Let's go through all of them. First, updates, and we hit enter here. And I want to install Pacman Contrib because it contains some scripts for Pacman. So I'll just hit enter here on the first option and proceed with installation by hitting enter. And there you go. Now, we are asked whether we want to install some helpers, also to install packages from the AUR. So I will do this, and for that, I will install yay. So I move to yay here and hit enter. And because yay cannot be compiled as a root user, the script is going to create an Arch Builder user to do that. And that's fine with me, so I'll just hit yes. And here, accept the defaults by hitting enter and proceed with the installation by hitting enter. Now we can proceed with installation of the dependencies by hitting enter. And now we can proceed with the installation of yay and we hit enter here. And this is going to take a moment to download and build the package. So I'll be back when it's done. We are ready now for the final installation here of yay and we hit enter here and yay is installed. Now the first thing we can do is upgrade with yay. So we select the first option here and hit enter. And there is nothing to do, which is fine. Before proceeding by installing other things, I want to also update the key ring. So I'll go down to the option here and hit enter and proceed with installation by hitting enter. And there you go. And if there are some other updates you would like to perform here, go ahead. In my case, I'm fine with this. So I'll just go to back here and hit enter. And we can move to the install option here and hit enter. So here we can install some programs from different categories. So first one is console. So let's enter console and we have generic compression tools and so on. So let's look in generic here. We have nano and Vim selected. I don't need Vim. The other packages already selected are fine with me. I want to install, as I said before, also Linux firmware and anything else I let it be selected. If you want to install some other things, go ahead. I'll just hit OK here. And many things are already installed here. That's why you are skipping. So we just need to install a few packages and I'll hit enter here. And there you go. Now as compression tools here, we have some zip utilities. I'm going to install all of them here just by hitting enter and proceed with installation by hitting enter. And that's done. Now for networking tools, let's have a look here. We have rsync already selected, traceroute and bind tools already there. I don't see anything else that I need right now. So I'll just hit enter here and proceed with the installation. And there you go. Now for web browser, I will skip this option because I don't want to install any command line web browser. And also I will skip the recovery tools here as right now I don't need to install this. So I'll hit back here. And now we go to the system menu and hit enter. And we can select some extra options for the kernel. So let's hit kernel here. And as we've seen before, I selected the Linux kernel here. So if I hit OK, you can see here it's going to install the Linux kernel, which is already installed. But it's going to install also the Linux headers, which I want to have. So I'll hit OK here. And the Linux headers are going to be installed right now. And that's done. And then I can go back here. As for services, let's enter here and hit enter. I have Network Manager and some other packages here. I see that I want to install actually also Samba and Blues and Blues Lips. These are Bluetooth packages, which you might need. And here you might want to pay attention. If you have an AMD processor, you will select AMD U code. And if you have an Intel processor, you will select Intel U code and then just hit enter. Proceed with installation here by hitting enter. And again, it's going to take a moment to download and install the packages. And there you go. Now we are asked to enable network manager because we downloaded and installed it now. So I'll say yes. And there you go. And I need to deselect DHCPCD because I installed network manager. So I'll hit yes here. And there you go. Now I'm asked also to enable SSHD when the machine boots up so that I have SSH and I hit yes here. And that's fine. The same thing goes for crony to have the cron tab working. So I'll hit yes here and hit enter to continue. Now for the numlock for the keyboard here, it asks me if we want to create a new service for that. So I'll hit yes here and to enable it when the machine boots. So I'll hit yes here and hit enter to continue. Now we can also enable have GED, so I'll hit yes here. 
and enter to continue. And last, we also can enable Bluetooth. So I'll hit yes here too. And there you go. Now let's move down to file system here in Tenter. I see OS Prober here as a package is not selected. I'm going to install this in case that I want to install another system one day. All these other packages, I'll let them as they are. And so I hit enter here and proceed with the installation. There you go. And now we proceed to the sound menu here and hit enter. And we have already some packages selected and those for me are fine. If you need to have Bluetooth support, you might want to install also this package here, Pulse Audio Bluetooth. And if you want to have the equalizer as well, but for me, this is fine. So I'll just hit enter here and proceed with the installation. And there you go. And last but not least, our print menu here. CUPS is already selected, which is great. I want to select also HPLIP because I have an HP printer and hit OK. And then hit Enter to accept the installation. And there you go. Now we need to enable our printing service CUPS so that it starts up automatically at boot. So I'll hit yes here. There you go. And we can go back to the previous menu. Now let's move to Xorg. Clicking on GPU infos, you'll see the infos of your graphic card. I'm on a virtual machine here, so this is not so relevant for me. Then let's move to install. We need to install Xor here. So by default, only two packages are selected here, but I would go ahead and select all of them just in case that I need some of them later. And then we can just hit enter. And proceed with the installation by hitting enter. It's going to take a moment to download and uh, install the packages. There you go. Now let's move to fonts. So this is important. We have default and TTF. Let's go into default here and they are all selected already. So we'll just hit enter here and we're going to install all of these fonts here. There you go. And hit enter here. And now let's move to TTF because we have the option to install many more fonts here. So I will go ahead here and install all of them. Notice also the first option is the Microsoft fonts here, which are going to be downloaded and installed from the AUR. Then once you're done, you just hit enter and proceed with the installation for the default fonts here by hitting enter. So it's going to take a moment to download and install. And there you go. Let's hit enter to continue. And now we can proceed by installing the Microsoft fonts here. The repository is the number one, the default. So we hit enter here. Differences to show, I will say none and hit enter. And now it's going to take a moment to download and build the packages. So I'll be back when it's done. And there you go. The fonts are installed. So we press enter to continue. And we can go back to the previous menu here and we'll go to input drivers, but we let these normally as they are. So we just hit back here. And for the video drivers, we basically select our graphic cards. So you have two choices here, open source and proprietary. I'll go to open source here. And I would say if you have an AMD card, you would select AMD GPU here, the first option. If you have an Intel card, you go to the Intel option here. And if you have NVIDIA cards and you want to use open drivers, you might want to install Nuvo. In my case, I have QXL, so I installed the last package here and hit OK. And hit enter here. There you go. Now, if you have a video card and you want to use proprietary drivers, you go down to proprietary and hit enter and select here NVIDIA. You have also options to select NVIDIA drivers for custom kernels here. I go back to the previous menu and back again and back one more time. And now we can choose the desktop environment. So let's select desktop environment here. And in this tutorial, I'm going to install GNOME. So I'll select GNOME here and hit enter. And we have two packages. We have the GNOME package and the GNOME extra package. So I'll select the first one and hit enter here. And the packages are all selected. So I'll just hit OK. And default repository one, it's fine. So we hit enter here. And also for this one, default one. And proceed with the installation by hitting enter. So it's going to take a moment to download the packages and install them. And I'll be back when it's done. And there you go. So we hit enter here. Now, because we installed GNOME, GDM was automatically installed, but we need to enable it in order to start at boot. So I select yes here. And there you go. And if you want to have a more complete GNOME experience, I recommend you install also the GNOME extra packages. I'm not going to do this right now, but if you want to go ahead and hit enter here. I'll go back to the previous menu. And again, back to the previous menu. Now we could go down to select display manager, but it was already installed and activated for me. If you select another desktop environment without display manager, you can go in here, select your display manager, install it, and you will be asked also to enable it afterwards. But I'll hit back here and then we can install some applications. Let's go ahead and install some things here. So first office, let's open this up and office suite, hit enter. 
And I'm going to install the fresh version of LibreOffice, which offers the latest features. If you want to have a little bit more stability, you might consider the still version, but I'm going to go ahead and select fresh and hit enter. And hit enter to accept the install here. And there you go. Now we can also install other languages if we want to. I don't need to do this as I have only English. Then I hit back here. Now we can also install some language 8. So let's go here and hit enter. We can install some packages for spell checking, hyphenation, and thesaurus. In my case, I want to install some spell checking. So I'll hit the first option here and hit enter. And now I can select the language. So I'll select German. I'll select English and I'll select also French and Italian. These are the languages I use the most and hit enter. And proceed with the installation here by hitting enter. There you go. And you can also install some office tools if you want to. We have calculator and calculate, but I don't need to install these. So I'll go back and I go back again and move down to internet and hit enter. And I want to install my Firefox web browser. So I'll click web browser here and select Firefox. You can select also other browser here from the list, but I hit enter. So with Firefox and proceed with hitting enter. There you go. If you want to install also some torrent programs, you have a list here of choices. I'm not going to do this. The same thing goes for the email programs. You can install Thunderbird or Evolution, but I'm going to skip this as well. And I go back to the previous menu. For multimedia, we have some extra packages for GStreamer, audio players, video players, and so on. In my case, I'm going to choose just video players because I want to install VLC and hit enter. And proceed with the installation here. There you go. And for video tools, I'm going to install also Simple Screen Recorder and hit enter. And there you go. So burner tools, I'll leave it as it is. And I go back to the previous menu and go down to graphics. There is nothing I want to install from this program right now. So I go back from development packages. There is nothing I need right now. So I go back as well. And under system here, we see we have some extra packages we could install. For example, VirtualBox and Wine are also here but I don't want to install them right now, so I'll go back. And we have also the possibility to create a GUI for Pac-Man, but I don't want to do this right now, so I'll just go back as well. And the install menu is now done, so we need to go back one more time. And we move down now to config, the last part of the main menu here. And we could set some options for bash firewalls and other things, but what I want to do is to create a new account for the new user. So I'll go down to accounts and hit enter, and click on users here and click add user and enter the username and hit enter and create a new password and retype it and there you go now we could also list and delete users here but i need to go back because i want to go to the sudoers and hit enter and i want to add a sudoer to the sudoer so i'll hit the first option here and select the user i just created so i just hit enter and there you go now we can go back one more time and one more time we go back to the main menu and now we can exit the second script here and we return to the first script so all options are done so we can go back from the first script here and now we can unmount all the partitions and there you go and now we go back one more time and we can now reboot our machine by hitting reboot and reboot yes and now if everything went well, we have first our grub bootloader, there you go, and we have our full system installed. There you go, this is GDM, so let's enter our password here. And let me configure my display here by selecting the proper resolution and bump up to 200%. There you go, and there you go. We have now our system fully installed. Let's have a look at LibreOffice and the other packages we installed. So we have LibreOffice here. We have our HP packages I installed before. We have Firefox here. Everything seems to be installed properly. And this is how to install Arch Linux with a desktop environment using the Arch file script. So guys, this is how to install Arch Linux with the Arch file script. I hope you enjoyed the video guys, if you did please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already, subs really helps us out guys, and if you want to support the channel please visit our Patreon website. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.